this is Samuel Tansoft. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up your first Agile project. The first thing I'm going to do is move over to the Administration tab and set up a new project. I'm going to use default mode, Agile, and leave the rest as is. If you want to change the names of the different components in the project, you can use this, these templates to define that. But for this project, we're going to use Scrum. Now I want to add myself to this project and make myself the main manager of it. So now you can see here we have this new project. The first thing I want to do is move over to the backlog. So by default, Handsoft looks like this. You have a number of columns enabled by default, and this is what we have to work with initially. So the first thing I'm going to do now is that I'm going to actually take away a few columns to make it as simple as possible. So the only thing I'm going to keep is product backlog priority. By default, Handsoft comes with a priority which is very high to very low. Uh, you can define this by creating your own column and setting it to be used here. But let's keep the default one for this. Now I need to move some user stories into this backlog. I prepared a few here. I'm just going to take these, copy them, paste them into the backlog. So. By default, you can run this as a flat list in a simple project like this. But in this case, I'm actually going to put some hierarchy here. I'm just going to grab all these stories and tab them in to this root node so that I can close it up like this. And I also have prepared three themes, friend, status, and profile. I'm just going to tab these stories beneath friends, easy to status and these into profile. So now we have a nice structure here for all our stories. The first thing we want to do now is prioritize these stories. So I'm going to move over to prioritized mode. You can see all our stories here in a flat list like this. I'm just going to grab one of these stories because this is the absolutely highest priority one. I'm going to put that as very high priority. I'm going to take this one and define that as our middle point. Choose medium priority for that. And let's say that this is a very low priority. So now you can see on the top of our backlog, they're ordered like this. Now I can grab stories and pull them in like this. And they will take the priority of the item above it. Let's say that we want to add a high priority here. And perhaps we want a low priority. So we have five levels of prioritization here. You can also grab a number of stories like this and drag them into the priority. And let's just select these and put very low priority there. So now we have all our stories in a prioritized list. Another thing I want to do now is just tag these items as user stories. You can see this flag, and it also gives us a field where we can add more description to each of these items. For some projects, this is enough. This is all you need. You need to prioritize lists that you can start working off. But sometimes you want to know how fast you're moving through the project and to give you an estimate of where you will be at a certain time. For that, you need to start estimating the backlog. So I'm going to add estimated ideal days to this project. So now we can start adding a guess on how big these items are. Let's say that we believe that this is about 20 days. This is five days, four, two. I'm just going to go through these and set out a few numbers. You can select several. 
and put the same number to all of them. Or you can just use the keyboard and enter to go through these. Though this exercise would typically be done at a little more thinking about what you're doing. So now we have a prioritized and estimated backlog. We have a problem here though. We have a very big item here on top and we're probably not going to be able to handle this in the first sprint. So we want to break this down. When I right click it and choose to go to item in hierarchy view. That will highlight that in hierarchy view and allow me to break it down. So I'm going to break this down into three user stories. I'm just going to call them user story one. Like this. Let's say that these first two are the ones that actually are very high priority, whereas this one can be done at the later stage. I'm going to add new estimates. And let's say that something like this. You can also see that the original estimate is retained at the parent item, but now our new estimates tells us that it was actually a little bit bigger than we estimated originally. Go into prioritized view. You can see that the items are here on the top of the list. We can move them up like this if we want to refine the priority even further. A backlog is never done. Continuously grooming the backlog and coming back to it, breaking down, reprioritizing, and estimating is one of those crucial things to make sure that your project is running smoothly. So now we're done, and we're going to start working with this. I'm going to close down the backlog here and move into the project schedule. We need some team members to work on this project, so I'm going to move back into administration, go into the user tab, and select these four programmers and add them to our new project. So the first thing I want to set up now is a sequence of sprints. I'm going to set up our first initial sprints. Let's say that it starts in two weeks time like this. And I'm going to create two weeks. We can now add another sprint, and a third sprint. And let's not work weekends here. Let's set it up like this. By selecting these three sprints, I can now assign team members to these sprints. Right-clicking here and allocate users to sprint. By default, everyone in the project is assigned to the sprint, but as a project manager, I'm not going to be involved in doing the work, so I'm just going to select the programmers and add them to the sprint. Now it's time to do our first sprint planning. So once again, I'm going to move back into the backlog and I'm going to pull it down like this. So let's do our sprint planning for the first sprint. We're going to start by asking the team, can we do this? Yes, we can do that. Then we're going to break this down into a number of tasks needed to complete this story. So I'm just going to put task one, two, three here. We're probably going to talk a little bit about how big they are. So let's add some estimates. Let's say eight hours, 16 hours, four hours, something like that. And I'm also going to assign these two are team members. Let's say that programmer Anna does these two and programmer Joe does this one. And then we're going to pull the next item in. Once again, the team is going to be asked, can we do this? We're then going to, once again, break this down into a number of tasks. I'm going to add a dentist, task four, task five, task six, and task seven. Once again, we're going to assign these. Like this. And do our rough work remaining estimates. 
And we would continue this till the team says, no, we can't do anything else in this sprint. While doing this exercise, we can also use these gu as guidelines for how much work each team member has committed to. The goal is not necessarily to fill this out because that would mean that they would have to work very hard, but it's just to see how much work each one is allocated to. We can now also look into prioritizing the sprint. So I'm going to move over to sprint priority where I can do the same exercise as I would in the backlog, where I can set which items are high and low. I can also use drag and drop here, as I did in the backlog. And this will also be reflected in the to-do list of your team members. As you work in the sprint, you will start gathering a burndown chart. You can see here, by default, right now, we're looking at work, rema work remaining. We have about 68 or exactly 68 hours work remaining left. We can also look at the burn down for the estimated ideal days. Those are the days that are coming in from the backlog. You will only get a burn down when the whole item has been completed. All the tasks below one of these user stories are set to completed. Let's look at how this looks in programmer Anna's to-do list. Or programmer Joe, actually. Here he has these two items. And if he completes one of them, you'll now see that it has been completed here in the sprint. And we also have a little less work remaining. And if time moved on, you would start seeing a burn down here. So now we've set up our first Agile project. The key here is that you continuously groom your backlog, work with it, reprioritize and add and remove items as you move along through the project. And repeat the pro sprint planning every time it's start time to start a new sprint and you will have your first working Agile project. That was all. Thanks for me. Bye-bye.